doing? All right. I'm David Boone, and today I'm going to be uh, talking about the Hero functionality and design of a split cylinder engine. Uh, so I'm going to go through and cover the basic cycles on a standard internal combustion four cycle engine and talk about some of the advantages in the design process of the split cylinder engine and, uh, and then go through and actually show the functionality of the split cylinder engine. So and if you have any questions during, I'm going to kind of bring the mechanical stuff down a little bit, make it pretty simple, but uh, if you do have any questions, definitely ask. So, I'm um, start with the, uh, the standard cycles on the you know, standard engine that's in your car, um, any you know, four-stroke, what people call an engine, and what you have on the piston, the first stroke is called the intake stroke, and on the top, this is going to be a cylinder right here. You have the piston pulling in a fuel and air combination through an intake valve right here. And here's going to be your spark plug and the exhaust valve. So the first stroke is the intake as the piston comes down and pulls in uh, fuel and air. The second stroke is compression. And what happens is the piston goes up and compresses the fuel and air combination. third stroke is combustion and that's where the spark plug ignites the compressed fuel and air and pushes it down and that's what drives, gives you the power to turn the crankshaft. And the last and final stroke is going to be your exhaust stroke. The piston comes back up and pushes out the spent gases out through your exhaust. So the design behind the split cylinder test, uh, the split cylinder engine, uh, with uh, 3D modeling right now it's shown that it can give a 50% increase in fuel economy, which is a pretty big deal considering right now with gas prices going up. There's been a lot of technologies out there to increase fuel economy, gas mileage. Um, a lot of stuff has been shut down and failed. And uh, there's some ways that do work, but I uh, won't get into a lot of that stuff. Um, one of the biggest things with it is right now with how a standard four cycle engine works, you have the entire cylinder filled with the spent gases and the exhaust, and when it pushes up, you don't get all of it out of there before it comes back and starts pulling in your clean air and fuel. And so you have the carbon monoxide and buildup that's still mixed in there, and what happens is you don't get as efficient and clean of a burn. So the biggest thing with the split cylinder engine is what they're doing is splitting the two sections of this with the intake and the compression and the combustion and exhaust and um, singling it out into two cylinders that one is dedicated to the intake and compression and one is dedicated to the combustion and the exhaust. And so what happens is you have half as many spark plugs but you are firing every other cycle. So I'll show you real quick what, uh, what happens on the, the cycles of the split cylinder engine. You have two, two cylinders, and you have what's called a crossover tube. And so the pistons follow each other. As this comes down, it pulls in the fuel and air. And I'm going to focus right now on this one, kind of explain what's going on here, and then I'll come back and show what's going on at the same time. And then as that one comes down, pulls in the fuel and air and comes up second cycle and compresses the fuel in there. After it compresses it, this piston is just above it in the stroke. And what happens is it then sends it over through the crossover to pre-compress into this cylinder where then as soon as it comes in, it ignites it to give you your combustion and you push this one down. And after it pushes this one down, it pushes this one out at the same time to pull in more fuel and air. And then as it comes up from another cylinder turning the crankshaft that pushes it up, it pushes out the exhaust right here. So as this one's compressing, it's also pushing out the exhaust. And what happens is instead of having the cylinder completely filled with uh, 
the spent gases, it pushes it up, and so you only have a small fraction of the stroke filled with the spent gases that is actually being forced out by the pre-compressed fuel and that gives you a much more efficient burn. So it's kind of a complicated process, and I won't get into too many of the details of how the other things work, but the biggest thing is that, uh, you know, it is showing it's going to give a 50% increase in fuel economy, and it hasn't been built yet. It's actually uh, working on finishing the design process, and I uh, should have a prototype up here in the next month and a half, actually. To, uh, to go through some real tests. Um, but without getting into too many crazy technical stuff. So who owns the design? Who came up with this design in the patent? You know, it actually hasn't been patented right, right now, as far as I know, yeah. Um, I'm not sure the company that initially had this design. There have been a bunch of different ideas. Um, and I've done some research, too, because I've been looking at um, Kind of fine-tuning this design and actually putting on a uh, expansion chamber on the outside of it that actually will collect excess pressure because without an external uh, pressure collector to save some of the losses this actually will give you hardly any increase in fuel economy but doing it as a split cylinder allows you to put an external tank that'll recycle some of the uh, the energy is really hard. I don't want to get into the yeah. crazy technical, but I don't know who uh, what co the company exactly that's going to be building the first one is. But what are you, an like, engineer, mechanic, or something? Yeah, yeah. I'm a mechanical engineer. So this is my last semester, so <laughs> yeah. a lot of technical stuff. And this yeah. is I do a lot of projects with cars, um, designing intake manifolds for BMWs and, yeah. and whatnot. But is there any other? Questions. Do you usually keep the pistons real clean and stuff, get the separation and the exhaust? Is that kind of the, another concept of it? Yeah, yeah. The one, uh, the one big issue also is heat, because right now with every single cylinder firing um, consistently, you have a much more uniform heat distribution. With this, since you have one cylinder that is firing and one cylinder that's only compressing, you get a really, really funky heat distribution because you have a ton of heat coming from here and not much coming from here. And so it makes things really tricky on keeping things consistent and that's how you can maximize reliability and like, keep it going for a long time. Yeah, I have an 85 4 runner. Mm -hmm. I get better gas mileage than my wife's 2007 Xterra. Yeah. Is that just because it's four, four strokes? And well, I mean, they're all four strokes. I mean, the new ones are four strokes too. Yeah. Uh, two stroke, I'm sure everyone's heard of two stroke. Their bikes, they're loud, they're obnoxious. Yeah. A two-stroke is a little bit different. What happens is it uses, it's only one cylinder. Every cylinder has a you know, spark plug, and normally they're single cylinders, but it fires on every stroke, or every two strokes. If you have one down and one up, and what happens is they actually exhaust out the bottom, and they actually create a vacuum <coughs> when the piston comes down, and that's what pushes it in, because you have the gas and oil mixture actually comes in below the piston, that's what pushes it in the top and cycles it through. <laughs> I can detail that process, but I know a lot of people probably don't. <laughs> Wouldn't understand it. It's, it's a little bit more complicated, but they uh, they beat themselves up a lot faster because they're, you know, firing on every two cycles instead of every four. So they don't have the time to cool off. So they tend to run a lot hotter. And that's kind of the design behind this, is to get it to fire on every two strokes, but minimize some of the heat. and. Uh, maintain some of the reliability. And this would make the engine life longer? Uh, not necessarily. Um, it's hard to say right now without the prototype being built, but it, it will Im increase fuel economy, for sure. Uh, looking at right now, 50% increase in fuel economy. I can describe how that works. It's a pressure volume curve with each stroke. And you look at the crossover region, and uh, comparatively it's showing right now that we'll get a 50 increase in fuel economy. Have you ever thought about doing like compressed air or something? I just know compression. Um, I just need some future cars to show and the kind of guy did compressed air to run his vehicle. Yeah, I mean, air. you're running a, a pneumatic motor, uh -huh. talking about? I think so. Yeah, the problem is the energy it takes to compress the air to get the, um, the 
power out of it, there's actually so many losses in it that it's not effective, it's not efficient. If you have too many losses, you're taking more power to create what you actually can then use. Because I've built some pneumatic motors. Yeah. Yeah. So. Any, uh, any other questions? Basically, I summarized, went through the basic strokes of a four cycle engine, and uh, the design theory, the improvements, and the process of the split cylinder engine. Okay. All right. <laughs>